<laughs> you're not really ready until you're safe. Summer safely and drive calm. Time to upgrade your adventure with an RV from Motorsportsland. Don't put off making exciting memories and exploring the many outdoor hideaways right here in Utah. Come in today and see how Motorsportsland can help you get away or visit motorsportsland.com. Dave and Dejanovic. We're going to have a live conversation right now with Representative Blake Moore. You know, we know it's wildfire season and we've got that massive um, bootleg fire burning in Oregon. My understanding it's growing by at least maybe four miles a day. And we've got Utah firefighters who are up there fighting it, which brings us to this conversation of what can we do to prevent these fires from getting so out of control, Todd? Yeah, you know, we need to, I, I don't have all the answers. Hopefully Representative Moore does, but we need to do something because I don't like the fact, I mean, we struggle with our air quality sometimes in Utah, but it's even worse when we're getting all this smoke from Oregon and um, Idaho well, we've been and, lucky and so California. Far this year. I feel yeah. like we've been, I know we've had, we've had some, some wildfires, fires, yeah. uh, but not to the magnitude they're seeing in other states. Oregon's massive bootleg fire, a yeah. producer just getting us this information, 616 square miles in size. I mean, the fire's bad, but I also don't want to breathe their smoke, you know. In all, my seven, lungs don't like that. In all, seventy-eight w- large wildfires are burning across thirteen states right now, and most of them in the Western United yes, States. Always Western United uh, States. Representative Blake Moore, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me on. Oh, we're glad to hear from you. Uh, it is wildfire season, and things are certainly ramping up. And I always hold my breath this time of year, hoping that we don't see what's going on in other states happen here in Utah. So you've. Uh, You've got this new, it's called the Fire Sheds Act. Uh, talk to us about what this is and what it will do to help prevent wildfires. Yeah, that's a great choice of words, too, on holding your breath from what Senator yes. Weiler you know, mentioned, <laughs> hey, too. You, you don't, how are you? You, you just, you, this, this is, um, you, don't, you don't want to be dealing with this because it obviously highlights the, the risk that we're, all, that we're going through right now. But it's, it's a neat thing to be able to, to, to enact legislation that, can address like the immediate issues that we're facing, right? So the top of mind, top news story a lot of times is what the Fire Shed Act will do. And, and it's simply, uh, to, to, to summarize it, it, it utilizes um, kind of fire shed research and mapping to sort of triage where the top 10% biggest risk comes from, right? The top 10% of our forest land is, is at biggest risk of, of fire, like 85% of that entire risk is also is, is put into this top 10%. And so it will leverage that technology to be able to identify that. And then the second key thing that it does, and, and Senator Wiley, you may have been involved in some of this, but there are things called shared stewardship um, programs where states and federal agencies work together to develop a forest management plan. Utah does an exceptional job at this. It's, 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 it's probably a gold standard, if you will. And um, recently we were able to have some uh, roundtables with experts in this from the governor's team with Reg Johnson and, and Brian Steed and Gordon Larson and, and, and meet with all of our federal agencies. And what we learned from that, what we took from that, you know, kind of led directly to this, this particular bill. Um, it, it, codif- it, it codifies that so it helps other states be able to enact partnerships and remove some of the regulatory burden so we can go in and implement some of the best ways to, to reduce catastrophic wildfire risk. That's great, um, Representative. And, and a lot of people in Utah don't realize, but two-thirds of our state is actually owned by the federal government, the uh, Bureau of Land Management, BLM. They, they manage a lot of it. So if your bill passes, how would that affect Utah in particular? Yeah, so it will allow for agreements. It, it removes this regulatory burden that um, exists. Uh, well, part of it is for the NEPA exclusions. It, 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 it will help with some additional NEPA exclusions. And again, this is a bipartisan bill. We've got a couple of representatives um, from states that they know this issue, one, one from Oregon in particular. Uh, and then it's also bicameral. So we've got Senate Senate um, going on it as well. So there, it looks good because in order to get any legislation done, it has to be that. Um, yeah, it has to get we'll, to will help to avoid that. It, it helps get things away from the, avoiding that potential 
um, litigation because these things can get bogged down. And so it removes that regulatory burden. And again, just it, it makes it easier for us to um, engage in these agreements with state and federal agencies. So, and you know, the federal government likes it too because they're, they're oftentimes understaffed and don't have the resources they need. And it allows for states to be able to step in and, and help. And, sure. you know, states have the best interest in mind when it's their own land. And there, we've seen plenty of data and years of, of best practices and just good stewardship that takes place when these partnerships can thrive. And Blake, are you the chief sponsor or a co-sponsor of this bill? So I'm the chief sponsor of this bill, and um, Qu- uh, Representatives Cuellar and Schrader from, uh, on the Dem side are have, have joined on um, to to co-lead. I think Cuellar is the, the co-lead, and, and we've got about, at this point, a handful of other Republicans that are signed on, and we're just going to get co-sponsors. And, and the Natural Resources Committee is going to push this. We held a hearing on it today. Uh, and um, you know, so, Representative it's, it's, Moore, can I ask you some just boil this down to the kitchen table for me? Um, first of all, I have a son who's a firefighter. He spent um, time in the summer months as a wildland firefighter before he went to work for the Unified Fire Authority. I've also spent a significant amount of time in the the Uintas, and specifically the high Uintas, where my in-law's property was uh, just affected by the bark beetle to no end many years ago, where we as a family went in and had to physically cut down dead trees and then ask the Forest Service for help. And this was a years-long process. In fact, I was telling Senator Weiler before you came on the air uh, to date, we are l- still burning some of that wood that we chopped, and we did this over years as a family. It, it, is this the kind of thing that this Fire Sheds Act will help uh, mitigate for families when we when there's a ton of dead on their land that could be a fire hazard? Um, can you talk to me about that? If it was, if it's a if it's a good management plan and something to um, sort of embrace. And we know that it's, and we know that that's the case, and you can, and you've seen that at the state level. What this does is allows for us to build these these shared stewardship programs and and reauthorize the Good Neighbor Authority that says, okay, we've got good ideas, we've got good practices, we've got data that shows this has been helpful. We can build these into our shared stewardship programs with the federal agencies. And um, it gives that authority back to the states to be able to sort of, you know, better address this and manage uh, manage that potential risk. This so seems, that's like the one key thing. Yeah. Okay. So this seems like something that is going to take a while, though. You know, I can't predict exact timing on on this. The fact that we've got good good sponsorship from both sides of the aisle. Uh, the need exists, and we'll push it as as, as quickly as we possibly can. Now these. Um, the, good, the good neighbor authorities and shared stewardship programs have been adopted by pretty much all states. Uh, so there is there is this going on. This is just going to to help sort of codify it so it it, it can continue and, and and thrive. But I think one of the other key pieces is is making sure that we identify the top ten highest risk. And you know that's really the majority of all potential risk is it's come from about ten percent of the forest land. So when you're sun is out there. We're not yeah. operating blind out there. We're mm-hmm. actually identifying where the biggest needs are and and being able to sort of direct resources to those to that part. I, th- I think that's the key piece to make is is it's a whole world out there, right? With yeah. with the amount of forest land we have, you know, let's identify where the biggest risk is and then we'll go and, and approach that. And I think that that, that can pr- pr- produce some of the best results. Representative Blake Moore, thank you so much for calling in today here on KSL News Radio. Uh, we'll continue to track your legislation and see as it, if it progresses over the weeks ahead as the wildfires are progressing in Oregon and in other states around, especially around the Western United States. Uh, straight ahead, we've got the Days of Forty Seven Parade tomorrow morning. I'm going to be along the parade route, um, and so will KSL Five TV. And in fact, if you can't make it downtown, KSL Five Television. Uh, starts airing it live at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Um, but maybe you want to come downtown. We're going to have a live interview with the Days of 47 Parade. Uh, Greg James calling the show. He's going to join us next to tell us all we need to know about how to get to the parade, when to get there, and what about the other events as well. I'm Dave Cauley, host of the podcast Cold. Our brand new second season focuses on the 1985 disappearance of a woman named Joyce Yost. 
Hear her voice for the first time. That's Cold Season 2, exclusively on Amazon Music. She's tired of feeling let down. I just want some support. He's ready for something new. We've been in this rut for like ever. From Purple, creators of The Grid, comes a mattress that cradles, comforts, and supports no matter how you sleep and won't ever have that stuck feeling like memory foam. I thought I knew what comfort was. Yeah, this is like comfort comfort reinvented. reinvented. Purple, the feel-good hit of the summer. Go to purple.com slash sleep in for a free set of sheets plus a free pillow with the purchase of select mattresses. Terms apply.